to a brand new video. As you saw today, all of the razzle dazzle has been done. We've been to the sauna, we've done the cold plunge, we have been to the gym. All of those things are out of the way. This is actually gonna be a pretty nerd video, and then I'm gonna explain what I've been doing in my Flutter app, how I've implemented onboarding in particular, and also a little bit about the, the login and sign-in functions of a new Flutter app. I've built quite a lot of Flutter apps now, so I know this quite well, and I know how it's meant to be done. If there are any pros out there who are very specific about you know, implementation, authentication, wrappers, providers, etc., let me know down below, because you will definitely not be pleased with this, but it is what it is. So this is what I've been working on during the day, and we've made some big progress on the login page as well as the onboarding page. Onboarding is pretty good to have because it's, it's been shown that if you have an onboarding page people are more likely to go through the entire funnel and once you start engaging with the app which is very easy on an onboarding page like you're just pressing next 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 then you're already engaged and you're more likely to sign up and create an account than if you don't have the onboarding which is kind of like why you you put it in an app. So that is what I've been working on and I'm gonna hop on a computer in a second I'm going to show you all of that in a minute. But Venture Pals is something that I've uh, started with a, a friend from Holland not to give away too many details in this particular video, but it's basically an accountability partner app where you can meet someone, you can be accountable together with them, in that you share what tasks you're gonna have for that week, and then you just do your task because you're more likely to do your task if someone else is following up on you doing those tasks. Me and him have been doing this for quite a while, actually. He's had this idea for a while. He doesn't really know how to build apps, so that's where I come in, and we just decided to do this together as a fun project. But let's get into the code. Here we are in my Flutter app code. And what we're going to be showing is a little bit of the whole setup of the onboarding flow as well as how I've done that so you can easily replicate this for whatever Flutter app you're building. So first of all, if we go to the onboarding flow, how this works is that we have a standard scaffold widget, which is, you know, the standard stuff which you have, that you have in Flutter. And we've passed this a page view widget. And first of all, there's a couple of parameters to keep track of. First of all, we have the on page changed uh, parameter, which is when the page is changed, so when you slide like that, it will set the state, which is rebuild the whole UI of the app, and it will check if the value of the page that we're on, so you can see this is an indication of what the page we're on, it will check if it's the last page or if it's not the last page. And essentially, it will check the last page it will equal to, um, it, will equal, it will just check if the value is equal to three, because we have four screens in total, and that makes the index of it three. After this, I have built a, uh, onboarding page widget, which is this widget down below here, which is just a simple stateless widget that takes three things. It takes a title, it takes an image, and it takes a subtitle. So it will then use this and put them in a center widget with some padding around it. And in this, it will create a column where we will have the image asset. So you have to pass an asset image, which is these ones that I have up here in my, uh, in a folder. And it will make it almost the width of the particular screen so that you kind of get this this width of an image. Then it will create some more padding and inside of this it will create a, a typewriter animated text. And the typewriter animated text is from the animated text gate and that's what makes this look like it's typed out. So if I refresh this now, we can see that this will this will type out in that nice little effect. It makes, it makes the page come alive a little bit. So check this kit out, animated text kit for Flutter if you haven't yet. It, makes, it has a lot of different cool animations. I'm just using the typewriter animated text. You can also use the text flow and make the text flow and stuff like that. So it's pretty cool. And I have it set to only repeat once. And then I have these custom text styles which is just heading white. That creates a you know, custom font to have it the same all throughout the app. And I also make it white. Moving on, we just have the subheading which is also the subtitle that we pass. So what we then do is that we take inside of this uh, page view widget, we have all of these children and they are essentially just onboarding page widget but with different text. So first of all, it says welcome to Venture Pals. I can just change this in this particular widget. I'll write whatever, I'll rebuild this and it will say uh, this new text that I just put. So that's how that works. and. What it does is that, it, well, if I then swipe on, it will just continue with that little onboarding or saying like, this is how you, uh, how you use the app, this is what the app is used for. 
If you have an app, I really recommend putting this in at the front because a lot of research has shown that if you get people activated and using the app to begin with, they're more likely to create an account and they're more likely to therefore stay. Then this is all part of a bottom sheet, which is this little widget here at the bottom. And it uh, is just a standard neon, again, this special color that we have. And it uh, is a height of 60 pixels and the width of the screen. And then it uses this is last page Boolean value to check if this is the last page or not. Because if it's not the last page, it will display the, this whole widget, which is just a row with a text button that uses the page controller uh, to show where we're at in this uh, sequence of pages within the page view. So if we then switch, like so, for example, we get to the bottom, and that is where this little widget comes in, which is essentially is last page is not true. And then this is just a text button that says get started. And once we press this, we will execute two functions. First of all, we will push the replacement, so we'll get rid of this whole uh, material page route and then we'll push a new one which is the sign up page but we will also use this which is uh, use the shared preferences packages to set the boolean value to show home to true and this is then accessed at the beginning of the app now i'm not really accessing it just because i'm building but if you then in the future once you've shown some of the onboarding it, this will be set to uh, show home to true and I can then access this boolean later on in the app, for example, and say, if show home is true, then we will go straight to the home page or straight to the login page or straight to the sign up page because this user has already been shown and been through the entire onboarding flow. If it's set to false, then they will be shown this onboarding flow to begin with. So that's pretty neat that we will update it uh, in the app and this doesn't require anything, any access to the internet or whatever. It's just a simple, uh, simple piece of storage which you have locally in the app. So if you rebuild this now one more time and then we use this and we press get started, we're taken to the sign up page. And the sign up page looks like this. And again, the sign up page and the sign in page are very similar. Basically, it is just a little image with that very high opacity or a low opacity, I guess you call it, meaning that it's very see-through, just adds a little nice touch to the background. These are two buttons that we haven't really implemented yet, but in the future, you'll be able to uh, sign in with Apple and Google. And then this, uh, this position widget, which is the, uh, the one at the bottom, takes a sign-up form. And the sign-up form is a separate widget, and it has these different controllers. So you take a name controller, email controller, and a password controller. And basically where this is, is passed in, it's in, inside of a, a form. And this, you pass, put it in a form so you can validate it later on, meaning that you can check that it's the, an email that they have entered, have they entered all the information, etc., etc. And there, now we have, so you can enter your name, you can enter an email, your password, and you can confirm the password, and then you can press submit. So right now you can't really submit anything because we don't really have anything in here, but that's something that I'm gonna add in a little bit in the future, but this works well for testing. But in the future we wanna have so that if you haven't added a password or the passwords don't match, that will, that will let you know. If you haven't added an email, that will let you know, etc., etc. We haven't really added those, those things yet. But also same logic goes for the sign in page. It just looks like that. And, or I can switch between the sign up and the sign in page. And each time I switch, I uh, delete the previous material page route just to uh, keep the app as light and fast as possible. For the future, so that we're not storing any, any unnecessary things if people are moving between the sign up and sign in page. And how this works is that I have this authentication file inside of uh, this uh, Flutter project. And we have a sign up, which requires a name, an email, and a password. And then later on you'll be able to set these and this is what we're going to be getting to and then it will just use very simple with how firebase does this it will create a user with email and password and you just pass the email and you pass the password and then after you receive this you also take the unique uh, user identifier which is the uid and you set a firebase record uh, for this user so that we can store data for this user again in the future same for sign in it's just the same very simple uh, firebase function sign in with email and password and also same with sign out, also a very simple one. Then in the future, we're gonna be using a, uh, uh, this onboard, or sorry, signed in wrapper to check if the user is signed in or signed out. If it's signed, user signed in, then when they hit the homepage of the app, they will be taken directly to the dashboard. If they're signed out, you're gonna just sign in and do that before they can access the, the dashboard. So that's how those, uh, those things work. And that's what gets this nice little onboard flow going from you know start of the app to where you're seeing this little, this little picture till you scroll through all the way through and then you get to a sign up page so pretty much the whole onboarding flow and the sign up and sign in functions are done we're gonna add uh, google and apple later but you don't really need it for a beta version also we're gonna be using some of these validation tools that you get in the form also not really needed for beta or alpha testing 
But uh, that's, uh, that's pretty much it for this Flutter app so far. I hope this has helped you a little bit with whatever you're developing, or maybe this was just total nerd talk and you have no interest at all. If that's the case, then I apologize for that. We have more exciting or more lifestyle type of videos coming in the future. But now let's get back to the tripod. Okay, that is it for today's video. I just walked through the whole onboarding and the sign up, sign in page for my Flutter app. I haven't really done really in depth code tutorials before. This one's really in depth, but like you get a pretty good overview of you know the onboarding to the sign up to the sign in page. So if you want to see more of those detailed coding views, then let me know down below. If you want to see more lifestyle types of videos like I did before, then also let me know down below. I'm going to think that I'm going to start mixing those uh, together from now on. But tomorrow we have quite a weird thing happening. Actually in April, as I may have told you, or I've touched on this many times in past videos, I tore my ACL off completely. Meaning that I've been walking around this earth for the past six months without an ACL whatsoever. It's just, according to the doctor, a little crumble, a little ball at the bottom of my knee, which is no good if you want to be squatting heavy things and you know lifting weights and putting them back down like the meathead that I am. So we're gonna need to get that fixed and thanks to Swedish Healthcare, they actually did that pretty fast. I went to the doctor in September, which was also like four months after it actually happened just because of oh, whatever, knee pain, it will go away. But it wouldn't because the ACL is off. Um, but I went to the doctor in September and now in the middle of November I'll actually be getting a surgery. So tomorrow on the 16th of November on a Thursday morning at 8 a.m. I will be going to the doctor and getting a brand new ACL. This is a little bit complicated because right now part of my work is uh, like quite manual. I also like going to the gym a lot so it's going to complicate things a little bit. Also I'm going to be in a lot of pain to begin with but we'll see how we'll manage to deal with that probably. Uh, so that's the plan for tomorrow. I'm gonna be recording part of that process as well. I'm gonna be staying at uh, someone else's house for the, the period of this time just because we have animals here and like there's infection risk and I can't be alone for the first 48 hours or whatever, whatever, whatever. But we're still gonna try to get some work done. So I'm gonna document a little bit about this whole uh, surgery process and then also I'm gonna document a little bit how, uh, how I progress with the app. So that's the plan for now. Uh, nothing really special. We'll, we'll see how it goes with the ACL. I'll make sure to document it and keep it in the starting a startup series. I think we're in episode 87 and I really want to get to 100. So if you want to see me make that happen, then please leave a like down below. Subscribe because it makes me very happy and it's completely free of charge. And I will see you in the next one. Peace.